Hello, and welcome to episode 5 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Imperial Officer from Fantasy Flight's Imperial Assault. The uniforms of the officers in the films vary in their hue, and appear in shades of grey, olive green and navy. I've chosen to paint my officers using a shade of dark blue, but you could easily use the same basic techniques with any colour of your choosing. Here are the steps we're going to use. We'll prime the figures in the usual way with whatever colour you might have. We'll then paint simple flat base colours, before giving the miniature a dark wash, ideally using different shades of wash for the skin, uniform and areas of black. We will then highlight the clothes and skin using layers, and finish the miniature off with an optional glaze and some final details for the eyes, uniform badge and some gloss varnish for the boots. Let's begin. You may find one or two stubborn mould lines on the Imperial officers that will need a little extra effort to remove, particularly on the right shoulder. After that, we prime the figures with whatever colour we have to hand. Grey would be a sensible choice however, and might be worth buying anyway, as it will save us a lot of work when we paint the ATST, if you haven't done so already. We can paint the base colours for the different parts of the figure in any order we like. I'm going to start with the skin, as I want my officers to have a somewhat pale complexion that will contrast nicely with the dark uniform, I'm going to use a light skin tone, Kislev Flesh, for the face and hands. This may need two to three layers to produce a strong base colour. If we're feeling really lazy, we could even replicate the card art and leave the hands black to give the impression that the officer is wearing black gloves. Now we're going to paint the uniform, and I'm using Citadel's Stegadon Scale Green, which I think is a bit more interesting than using plain grey. Next we're going to paint the icon on the hat, the belt buckle and rank badge with some bright silver, neatening mistakes as we go. We'll then paint all of the black areas with a 50-50 mix of black and Mechanicus Standard Grey. Finally we paint the hair. For this officer I'm going to use a dark grey, but you could of course vary the hair colour by using whatever shade you like. With the base colours neatly applied, we're ready for the dark wash. For the skin, we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade for our wash. As usual, we give the bottle a strong shake and apply the shade undiluted. We'll then use a black wash for the belt, boots and gun, as well as the silver details. And since I've chosen to give this officer grey hair, I'll also use the Nuln oil there too. As the clothes are already quite dark, a wash won't make a huge difference, but I'm going to add one anyway to add a little extra depth to the shadows. A straight black wash would be okay, but I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of Nuln oil and Drakenhof nightshade. Thank you. 
Once the washed areas are completely dry, we're ready to begin the highlights. For the skin, we're going to simply reapply some Kislev flesh to the flat and raised areas of the face and hands, taking care to avoid the areas we want to remain dark. We want the paint to be thinned down just enough for us to be able to highlight up in a couple of thin layers like we did for the Royal Guards, but not so watery that it becomes difficult to control. For the face, we want to save the brightest highlights for the top of the nose, tip of the chin and the cheekbones. The darkest areas would be those parts of the face and neck that would be naturally shadowed, such as the eye area, under the nose and the neck beneath the chin. If you find yourself going a bit too far with the highlights, you can always reapply some Reichland flesh shade to darken things back down. To finish the skin highlights off, we could add a little white to the Kislev flesh and give the nose and cheekbones one final hit to add an extra bit of contrast. Now we highlight the uniform, and I'm going to use Citadel's Dark Reaper for my first layer of highlight. We're going to cover all of the flat and raised parts of the uniform with this colour, with perhaps a second layer to produce the next lighter tone. As the overall look of the uniform ought to remain dark, our highlights need to be quite subtle, so we should only expect to see a small difference with each layer that we add. We can, however, afford to go a shade lighter, so once I'm done with the Dark Reaper, I'm going to use some Thunderhawk Blue to add another layer of highlight. Alternatively, you could try adding a little white or light grey to the Dark Reaper to achieve a similar colour. With this lighter tone, we're going to mimic a roughly overhead light source by highlighting the top of the hat, shoulders and upper chest area, as well as the upturned surface of the arms and the raised creases on the trousers. Once again, two layers should be enough to produce a nice smooth transition. At the risk of over highlighting the figure, we could add a little white or light grey to the Thunderhawk blue to add our final brightest highlight. Once we're done highlighting the uniform, we can add a little sparkle to the belt buckle, badge and the hat icon using a touch of silver.
I'm also going to give this officer's hair a simple Mechanicus standard grey highlight. We're now ready to add some finishing touches. Just as we did for the Royal Guards, I'm going to use a glaze on the uniform to help blend the layers together, but also to subtly alter the hue. A simple blue glaze would work well, but I'd like to add a gentle hint of green, so we'll be using a glaze made of a 50-50 mix of Gwilliman Blue and Waywatcher Green. We carefully apply the glaze undiluted to the entire uniform and give it plenty of time to dry. We can see that the layers now look a little smoother and the uniform has a pleasing turquoise hint. Another finishing touch I sometimes like to add to male human figures is to give a very watered down glaze to the chin area to create a subtle variation in hue that helps differentiate the more stubbly tone of the chin with the cleaner tone of the rest of the face. To do this I'm using a thinned mix of Nulm Oil with Drakenhof Nightshade and I'm using Citadel's Lamian Medium to thin the mix. Lamian Medium is essentially a colourless glaze and is often used instead of water when thinning as it flows so well and gives nice even coverage. You could just use water however. I'm going to create a very thin mix using around 75% medium and 25% of the blue and black shades. Depending on how thin our mix is, we may need to apply several layers before we get a look we're happy with. Just remember we're only looking for a subtle change of colour. This is actually quite a simple step, but one of those small touches that can really help bring a figure to life. Now we're going to deal with the eyes. The easy approach here of course is simply not to paint them at all. After all, they won't be visible whilst playing due to their being obscured by the hat. If you do want to give them a little definition however, a tiny dab of white or Celestra Grey with your smallest brush should do the job. Now the face is done, we're going to add a few small dabs of blue and red to the badge. For this kind of detail where we want a strong colour with just a single application, you don't want to thin the paint too much. We now finish the officer by painting the base, applying some protective matte spray, and perhaps some thinned gloss varnish to add some shine to the boots. These officers are now complete. Thank you so much for watching and for all the encouraging comments and likes. Join me again soon as we push towards the completion of the Imperial Faction. Happy painting!